Hi, welcome to the next training session of SAP FISO module. Today's topic is internal order planning, which is again a part of internal order in SAP controlling part. In internal order planning, we'll be covering the basics on internal order and the internal order configuration steps and then the unit testing part. In the last training session, we have covered the basic internal order part and now we are continuing with the internal order planning as the same as in the cost center planning. Similarly, we can plan for the internal order as well. So moving on to the introduction part of internal order planning is internal order planning allows you to roughly estimate the cost of a job before the order starts and to make an exact calculation at a later date. You can choose between various planning approaches to compare the effectiveness of different methods. The levels of internal order planning are overall planning, cost element or activity planning, easy cost planning and unit costing. For a simple project with a shorter lifespan, overall order planning must be the perfect solution. We have discussed earlier that what is internal order all about and why there is a need of internal order for any organization to be used. A more complex planning span is when the time period is a longer period of time where a detailed unit cost planning approach is required. Further, functionality provides the ability to fully integrate order planning with cost center accounting, profit center accounting and special ledgers as well. In the controlling module, SAP makes a distinction between planning and budgeting. So when we are talking about planning, there is another concept of budgeting as well. We can plan on one side and we can have a budget on the other side as well. So these are two different things. Planning implies that an interactive process may occur in which many different versions of plan may be developed until one is decided upon. The budget on the other hand defines as a detailed work plan describing how the approved amount will be allocated and is developed once the overall plan has been confirmed. The budget is a tool through which project management will approve and allocate cost within the internal order. The planning and budgeting tool set is a very robust in internal order area. We are able to see or we are able to set up a planning procedure or process to create a planning object that can reflect the planning process of setting up a standard cost for the product. So this planning internal order planning approach is a very very handy approach in any organization. Now SAP provides four different level of internal order planning as uh, mentioned on the screen. First is overall planning. In overall planning approach, this is the simplest form of internal order cost planning available in SAP. Plan costs are maintained at order level and can be detailed on an overall or annual view. If the purpose of planning is to compare total actual project cost to plan, overall planning is a better or a good solution. The another level is cost element activity planning. It is used for more detailed project tracking because it offers the user a cost structure view. Both cost and revenue can be planned for an internal order in cost element and activity planning. Moving to the third level that is easy cost planning this cost planning approach allows you to assign cost variant information, assign cost component structures to the planning process and 
assign the overhead to the planned data for additional details of internal order planning process. An advantage of this or using easy cost planning is that you can set up automatically assigned costs from purchase requisition or purchase orders, reservations, goods issues and internal activity allocations directly to the planned value. So that is why this is also known as execution service which is activated by using the cost, easy cost planning method. And the last method is unit costing. Unit costing is related to cost element activity planning and is mainly used in circumstances in which you have access to more information like quantities, rate of consumptions and all. Integrated planning is not available at unit costing level. So these are the different levels of uh, internal order. Now moving on to the next are the configuration steps which we have already discussed in the very first module of internal order, first training session of internal order that is the last training session where we discussed about the internal order planning. Internal order planning basically consists of two configuration steps. One is you need to maintain the user defined planner profile and the next one is maintain planner profiles for overall planning. So moving to the first configuration step that is to maintain user defined planner profile. A planner profile is a selection of planning layouts for the planning sessions sometimes with specific default settings. Planning profile is used to control the process flow for planning. So you use planner profile to control the way planning is carried out. In a, prof in a planner profile you specify per planning area which planning layout is to be used with which default values. Per planning area you can create as many planning layout as you require. The profile item determines the order of planning layouts within a planning area and can be used to assign some planning layouts to a planning profile as well in a multiple area but with a different default settings each time. So how we can maintain a planning profile we can move on to the SAP system with the path as mentioned on the screen. So moving with the SAP path we need to execute the transaction SPRO enter then we need to go to SAP reference IMG controlling expanding the options and that we need to go to internal orders then again expanding the options and within internal order we can we need to go to planning and then manual planning so we went on to the planning then to manual planning and within manual planning you can find the option now maintain user defined planner profile so we can execute this option over here maintain user defined planner profile execute so once executed you can have a look that there are two options now create authorization group for planner profile and maintain user defined planner profile so we can move on to double click on the maintain user defined planner profile so once you double click, double click on it, it will take you to the next screen as on the system. Now, in this part, what we have to do is we have to create our own planner profile. So what you need to do is you need to select the standard SAP, SAP 101. It's the same planner, same profile, which is a, a standard SAP profile as we discussed in the cost center planning as well. These are the four which are standard SAP profile defined and we will be taking the first one that is SAP 101 and if we can copy this so as to create our own. So 
so now we can go to copy so once it has been copied now you can rename this as per your convenience as you want to put the description of this once you have created this now we need to select this profile okay before selecting we need to enter on it because we have copied it so that the backend data can get copied to this particular profile so we need to click on to the enter so once you enter now you are advised to modify okay enter again okay so we need to change the profile okay the profile name is already mentioned in the standard SAP so what you need to do is you need to create your own profile name over here so we can create Z SAP 100 enter this is already existing into the SAP system so we can take one okay one is also there So we have created 110 and you can see now the data has been copied to this particular profile. It is in process of copying the data from SAP 101 to ZSAP 110. And now you can see the, the number of dependent entries copied are 39. So once this has been done, you can continue to it and then we can move on to save this transaction, this particular profile. So once you save this profile, okay now select the profile and then we can move to the general controlling data double click on general controlling on this side so once you double click it will take you to the next screen and in that you need to select now orders because we are in internal order so we'll be selecting internal order orders cost element activity input and then we need to go to layout for controlling so that the planner profile can be assigned to the layout for internal order so we need to double click on to the layouts for controlling so once you double click on the layouts it takes you to the next screen and this is screen you need to select this overwrite option on this so you need to select this checkbox for overwriting the same way as we did in the cost cost center planning similar to that and once this has been done we can save this screen now so once we have saved that means now the planner profile has been created and the planner profile has been assigned to the layout so this is how the first step of internal order planning configuration step has been completed so moving to the next configuration step is maintain planner profiles for overall planning in this you need to you need planning profiles for the planning methods as below overall planning for internal order hierarchy cost planning for projects preliminary costing for production orders that do not have a quantity structure CO production orders cost planning for investment programs or investment measures and for appropriation request and financial budgeting you can create a new planning profile or even you can copy up uh, an already existing planning profile and do the needful changes as accordingly now the two settings are important in this one is a time frame you can specify which values are to be planned and in which fiscal year and the another is value dispute in the value dispute you can specify which standard view the system is to display with the plan value when you call up the initial screen for planning you can default the number of decimal places and the display factor so the path is on on the screen as uh, first we need to go to IMG screen then to controlling then controlling to internal orders planning manual planning and maintain planner profile for overall planning so let's move on to the SAP system and see how we can maintain this planner profile for overall pl planning in internal order so let's move on to the SPRO path 
we need to execute the transaction SPRO enter then we need to go to SP SAP reference IMG and this will take us to the display IMG screen where all the different module configuration steps and paths are there so we need to go to controlling within controlling we need to go to internal orders and in internal order we need to go to planning then we need to go to manual planning and now you can find it over here maintain planning profile for overall planning so this is the step which we need to maintain on this part now we can move on and we can execute this step over here for maintaining the planning profile for overall overall planning now executing this step will take us to the new screen now over here you can find that there are two options in the new pop-up screen one is to display the planning profile for overall planning and the next is to maintain the planning profile for the order types now in this we need to double click on the define planning profile for overall planning that is the first option now double click on that it will take us to the next screen so you can see on the screen there are a number of different profiles already defined now we need to define our own profile so to define our own profile we can move to new entries and in new entries we will be defining our own profile suppose I take my own profile as to be 1100 code and this can be given a description to that the description can be named as IBM planner profile and then we can move to the next screen so in this planner profile you have to take care that you have to take alphanumeric ID which is up to seven characters which describes the planning profile the next part is now uh, have, is the text which where we have defined the the planning profile part the description of the planning profile has been put up now be as clear as possible because the planning the profile in the controlling area independent and you do not want its use to be misinterpreted so the description of the profile has to be very very clear moving to the next section is time frame now the fields found in the time frame section relate to the planning years available for the user input and review now in this there are certain fields like past future start now past come uh, let's come up with the past field first this field refers to the number of years before the start year the user will be able to plan or budget so suppose I take the past year as to be 2 for example if the number 2 is entered in the field the current or the start year suppose is 2014 the user will be able to view or change the plan or the budget back to 2012 moving to the next field is future again this setting is similar to the past setting it refers to the number of years beyond the start year the user will be able to plan for example now if I take the future as 3 and the suppose the current or the start year is 2014 in this case the user will be allowed to plan till 2017 that is 2014 current year plus three years ahead that is 2017 moving to the start option now this will refers to the first year that planning or budgeting will be accessible to the user the number entered here will be added to the current fiscal year to determine the start year. If you want to default the current fiscal year as the start year, leave this field as blank. Then moving to the total values and annual values. Now if you select this field, that is total value, if you want to allow the user to plan for overall values on the order, at the highest level an order or project can be planned for total cost regardless of the year it is consumed like for an example suppose an order has a 
total plan cost of five lakh dollars this would be considered as total value for capital investment order there will be a different settings for that so what we need to do is we need to select this total values and we need to select this annual value over here as well annual value refers to when you allow the user to plan annual expenditure for an order so if you want annually to plan for the expenditures in that case you need to select the annual value checkbox like example again suppose an order has a total plan cost of five lakh dollars and you want to plan it on year to year in that case you can have the option of putting the plan annual expenditures against the order with the help of this annual values moving to the next is representation section now in this section the first part coming up is the decimal place now enter the desired number of decimal places in which you want to plan suppose I want to plan to the maximum of two decimal places the next is scaling factor now if scaling is important when planning enter the scaling factor here for example if you want to plan in thousands enter 3 in the scaling factor field with a scaling of 3 a plan of $1000 is entered as 1000 on the planning screen so that is the part of this scaling field however we will not be taking it as an option over here as of now moving to the next part now is detailed planning and unit costing if cost element level details or planning integration is required or desired we need to come to this option over here as detailed planning and unit costing you can save time by entering the default master data sets in the detailed planning and unit costing section so if you already know what are the different groups cost element groups which will be used under the profile in that case we can assign those groups in these fields like primary cost element group revenue cost element group sender cost element group or sender account type group so if desired you can fill these different cost element groups to be default for cost element level planning that is the option of this part over here like suppose primary cost element we want to take so we need to go to the list of the different primary cost element groups created take the chart of account 1000 enter so we can select the group over here as direct expenses group can be selected like now over here as a primary cost element group similarly if you have created so similarly you can assign the respective groups over here else we can move ahead so coming to the next is currency translation on overall plan values in this we need to select the exchange rate type as a mandatory option so we can move on and we can execute the options of exchange rate types available so these are the different list available to you out of which we need to select the exchange rate type which has to be taken on the system so the one which we will be taking over here is 2011 that is currency exchange rate that is the current exchange rate so this exchange rate will be picked from the foreign exchange maintained part and which is applicable as per the current exchange rate so we need to take this 2011 over here so once we have taken the exchange rate type over here now we'll be moving to the planning currency so in the planning currency you have to always take the controlling area currency and once these all parameters have been taken up now we can move on and we can save these screens so that our planning profile overall planning profile can be created so we can save the screen now and once it has been saved continue to be saved in this request 
So you can see now the data was saved. That means the planning profile 1100 for IBM planner profile has been created. Similarly, you need to create your own planning profile for your particular controlling area. Now moving to the next is the unit testing part but before unit testing let's maintain have a look at the couple of more configuration steps like the next is to maintain the number range for overall planning so we can execute the next configuration step that is to maintain the number range for overall planning however this is optional this is not a mandatory part so we can even leave that over here but just for a knowledge perspective while I'm moving it so executing the maintain number range for overall planning you can move up over here on the screen so moving up to the so in this we can go to the intervals change intervals option over here and click on it and there are these number of ranges already maintained in the system and now if we if you need to maintain the number range for planning profile we can move on to this interval insert interval option click on that and we can maintain the number range suppose I maintain the number range for the series 08 and the range which will be maintained over here suppose is 8 to so this is what I would be maintaining over here on the screen. So once we have taken the number from and two, now we can move on to insert option over here. So as you can see that the number range has been added in the screen, serial number 08. Now we can save the screen and continue. So the changes were saved. That means the number range has been created so we are done with the configuration steps of internal order planning and now we'll be moving to the unit testing part so in the unit testing there are basically three transactions which we need to do for planning of internal orders and then there there are certain reports with respect to the internal orders which we can go for so moving on to the unit testing first we will need to create any uh, an internal order in the last training session we even had created number of internal orders as we covered the internal order basic customizations in the last training session so let's move on and create few of the internal order as on the screen so the transaction code to create an internal order is KO01 so moving to the SAP system KO01 enter so first we need to select the order type in which we want to create an internal order. So let's select the internal order from the list of orders. So these are the different internal orders and if you remember the internal order which we created was 1100 that is internal order, real internal order order type. So we can select this internal order type as 1100 over here and now once we have selected internal order we can enter on the screen and it will take us to the next screen so as to fill the basic details related to the internal order. So enter. Now as we enter it asks you for the controlling area. So the controlling area is Z100. Enter. Now you can see on the screen it takes you to the next screen so as to fill the assignments and then the control data. So on the screen we can fill the description. So suppose I put the description that uh, internal order for ABC fair. Now moving to the next is we have to select the company code we need to select the object class as overhead in this and in case you know that with which profit center that particular order or fair relates to you can select the profit center as well so these all the options are so we can select the profit center from the screen as selected and 
Similarly, you can select other options like plant and business area if there is any plant or business area been involved and other parameters if required else you can leave them blank. Moving to the next is the control data. So there is nothing else you have to fill in the control data as well. The main part which you need to fill is the assignment part. Now we can save the screen and as you save it so you can see down that the internal order number 10003 has been created on the system. Now we can go back again to the change option because once you create an internal order the second step is to release the internal order. Without releasing the internal order you cannot use that internal order for any of the business transactions. So to release the internal order you need to go to the transaction KO02. So moving to the transaction slash in KO02 enter. So the same internal order you can enter on the screen. Now in the same particular internal order we need to go to control data and in control data you can find the option over here release order. So, so you have to click on to this release. Once you click on to the release you can see in the footnote the order has been released. So this is what you need to do and then you can save this screen. And you can see now the changes have been saved. So this is what you need to do to release the internal order. So always whenever you create an internal order you need to release the internal order at the same time. Unless released you cannot use the internal order in any of the transactions. Now moving to the next is change order plan overall year. Now if you want to plan value for the internal order for the whole year then you have to use the transaction code K012. So moving to the transaction K012 onto the SAP system. K012 enter. So this transaction is used to plan for the whole fiscal year for the internal order. So what you need to do for executing this particular overall planning is to you have to take the internal order number. So you can plan for the whole fiscal year for each internal order as well as you can plan for the whole internal group as well. So it's up to the organization how they want to plan or you can even plan on the basis of the order type. So that now suppose we are planning it on the basis of each internal order. So in that case you need to select the internal order over here then the version and the currency in which currency you want to maintain or you want to plan. So I am taking dollars. Now after doing that you need to click on to this overall planning. So as I clicked on to the overall planning. Okay. So as you can see now it has taken up to the next screen to you and you can read the message on the below part that the year 2013 is not supported for controlling area Z110. Why? Because we have implemented the controlling from the fiscal year 2014. So the date the fiscal year from which a controlling area is implemented from there on only you can use the the controlling part any of the sub module of controlling similarly internal order can be used from 2014 onwards. So in this now if suppose you want to plan for the internal order like for ABC fair I have created the internal order and suppose uh, as a practical scenario every year an ABC fair is used to be uh, done by the organization. So every year they has a certain fund which is executed or which has been planned to be put on that particular fare and suppose for 2014 the total fare amount is been planned at fifty thousand dollars and similarly you can even plan for the next year like for the next year 2015 fiscal year fifty five thousand dollar has been planned so these plan value you can assign onto the screen and once this plan value has been assigned later on Later on you can compare the planned internal order value with the actual fair value 
that what is the actual spend and what is the plan value and the variance can be analyzed so over here you can maintain your planned internal order value for the fair similarly you can create for any other internal order as well for any other activity or job and you can put the plan value for them that what is the planned value decided by the management and you can save this screen now so once you save the plan value has been saved on the system so this is how you can you can plan for the whole fiscal year on the basis of internal order that is the transaction k012 moving to the next is you can even plan on the basis of cost element or breakup wise like expense to expense on the basis of internal order just like we did for cost center on the basis of cost elements similarly you can plan the internal order planning on the basis of cost elements too so moving for the planning of internal order on the basis of cost element the transaction is kpf6 so moving to the transaction kpf6 enter now in this screen now you can see that there are certain differences there are different layouts available in this so if you go for the layout next to it extending this is for activity type if you go further next it will show you for process input and the next it will show you for primary and secondary order cost but what we need to go for the planning of is the cost element planning so for cost element planning we need to go to the first is to define the version so the version you have to take over here from the list of the various versions available so there is only one version available that is zero so you can double click on that and you can select the version over here now we can decide the period from 1 to 12 because I am been now planning for the whole fiscal year on the basis of cost element if you want you can plan for a quarter also quarter to quarter or half yearly or even period to period planning can also be done it's up to you how you want to go with it so suppose I plan it for the whole fiscal year then you can put the fiscal year over here 2014 now you need to take the internal order for which you want the planning to be done with respect to the cost element so the cost element can also be taken up over here on the screen like suppose I take the cost element 400001 and even if you want to plan for the whole cost element group then in that case you can create the group for the cost element and that group can also be assigned over here so uh, both the options are there available for this now once this has been done now we can move on to overview screen it's very much similar to the cost planning which we did in the cost planning training session part now click on the over once you click on the over overview it will take you to the next screen so you can see now it has took you to next screen now and in this you can see this cost element refers to the cash discount allowed so the cash discount planning is done that how much cash discount you will give to a maximum suppose I put the cash discount a maximum amount of thousand dollars so the, that simple means that for this particular internal order that is for ABC fair there will be a maximum cash discount planned is up to one thousand dollars similarly if you want you can further add on further cost elements as well suppose we go back okay we are cancelling this right now okay it has been posted no problem we can take certain more cost elements range has been taken from 1 to 20 and again we can go to overview so in that case you will find now that the options are open for the first cost element that is cash discount we have already defined thousand dollars now for others also we can define like four zero 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 six four zero 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 seven I have decided over here for two thousand dollars of planning in this I have decided for three thousand dollars of planning so those things even you can plan for further now for uh, you can see that 40006 refers to the depreciation on building 4007 refers to depreciation on plant and machinery similarly you can move on to 40012 
and here also you can assign further amount of suppose I assign it to five thousand dollars and this refers to okay there is nothing no cost limit exists no problem we can take some other of it okay So the 4005 which refers to loss on sale of assets which is $5,000. Similarly you can define a particular uh, part as like salary you can take the cost element of salary and you can define the planning that how much salary you are expecting to pay on this particular employees on this particular fare. Similarly you can decide for miscellaneous expenses for admin expenses for traveling expenses for the fair for the particular fair which you have uh, held or planning to be held so all the cost can be planned against that so this is how you can move over here for planning for respective different expenses can be done in a breakdown level in the last transaction we planned it for the whole fiscal year that is with fifty thousand dollars but in this part you can break down that fifty thousand dollar of planning in 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 a segregation mode with different expenses so now we can save the screen and once saved now you can see the the planning has been saved for these different expenses so this is how you need to plan for at the fiscal year level at the same time in the segregation expense level how the planning of internal order the organization want to do but do take care that these things need to be first on a spreadsheet so as to have a proper clarity of the different planning to be done and then that to be taken up in the SAP system moving to the list of various reports in internal order planning the very first report is plan actual comparisons in which we can compare the plan internal values with the actual internal values in the system and we can look for the variances where occurred whether it has exceeded or where on the lower side against the plan value and which can help the management a better decision making parts with respect to the various activities or jobs so moving on to the first report that is s underscore a l r underscore eight seven zero one two nine nine five now executing the report on the SAP system enter so once entered you need to take the controlling area over here so that will be Z100 the controlling area which is assigned to the company code the next you need to take is the fiscal year that is 2014 and the period can be taken from 1 to 12 even you can you can analyze the actual versus the plan for period to period or even on the quarter basis or half yearly basis and yearly basis all the options are available moving to the plan version you need to select the plan version as 0 and then the actual valuation is not needed so these are the first five parameters which you need to assign and in case you want to run the report on the basis of group wise you can select the order group or the cost element group now moving to execute now I will be executing the all internal orders plan versus actual so executing the report now so as you can see the report the report shows that there are three different internal orders in the first internal order project ABC there is no actual no plan value whereas in the internal order 2 1002 IBM LLC there is an actual plan actual value of ten thousand dollars whereas there is no plan value and if you move to the third one that is internal order for ABC fair it has got eleven thousand dollars and there is no value as per the planned or the actual part so this is how you can compare the reports from actual to the planned and then the variance and then the variable variable percentages and you can see in total 
the actual is ten thousand dollar the planned is eleven thousand dollar so there is a variance of one thousand dollar over here and the difference is around nine point zero nine percentage so even if you want you can collapse this over here and it will give you a total value in a total wise in totality but if you want to see the breakup you can expand this part and it will give you the the detailed breakup of that total value as per the internal order wise so this is the report which we execute for uh, the actual and planned comparison of internal orders moving to the next report exit yes back so moving to the next report now is internal order by cost elements so if you remember we assign the cost elements in the transaction KPF 6 where we assign the different cost elements different plan values that means the expenses have been assigned different plan values as per the internal order so that report also you can have a look from over here that how many different cost element has been assigned different plan values for the internal order so the report for that is s underscore alr underscore eight seven zero one two nine nine six so let's see how this report looks like in the SAP system so executing the report enter so it will take slight some time to call up the report so this is the report in front of you this is orders by cost elements you need to select the controlling area the fiscal year and then the period for which you want to execute the report and then the plan version the plan version will always be zero in any of these reports because our plan version is zero for the controlling area Z100 so now we can execute the report executed so now we can see the values over here on the screen that uh, they are different internal orders and they have got different cost elements among that the first uh, row in blue color is the internal order and in the yellow it is the cost element over here so you can see the internal order first has got nothing but the second internal order 1002 has got an actual transaction of ten thousand dollar but there is no planned transaction value in that moving to the third is 1003 in that we have assigned couple of more internal orders if you could remember that in cash discount we allowed $1000 of discount whereas in this we have already given $10,000 of discount as an actual so you can see there is a variance of $9000 that is means that the cash discount allowed has been exceeded by 900 percentages moving to the next is 1003 same internal order but the cost element is different so the plan value assigned to the loss on sale account asset account was five thousand dollar and there is no actual value similarly the depreciation on building and planted machinery has got no actual values over here but their plan values are different so you can see the variance is there and then the percentages variance are also been assigned to you even if you want you can you can collapse these transactions at just at controlling cost element level also we can expand these transactions with this and you can see that it shows you the total value over here if you want to have a detail you can expand further it will show you the cost element wise values so these are the different cost element the actual values have been assigned actual values are referred to the actual transactions which happened in the SAP FI module which get uh, get uh, to controlling part and then you can see the plan value and even if you want to see that how many cost element are assigned to this particular cost element how many internal orders are assigned to it so in that case you can go and expand this and it will show you the internal order so this particular cost element depreciation on plant and machinery is, is related to the internal order 1003 so this is how you can execute a report in this part for having a detailed analysis for detailed purpose for 
how much internal order and cost element values have been assigned to for the planning and actual respectives. Moving back now to exit the report, you have to click on yes. So now moving to the next report and that is about internal orders yearly comparison. So over here you can compare your internal orders values planned or actuals on year to year basis so as to have a look that on a year to year basis a particular activity or a job or a particular project what was their plan value and how was the actual values uh, been increased or decreased by that much what is the variance among the plan value and the actual value so the report for that is s underscore alr underscore eight seven zero one three zero zero one so we can ex copy this report now we can execute this report onto the SAP system so as you can see s underscore alr underscore eight seven zero one three zero zero one now enter on the screen so this will report will be uh, the screen output uh, parameter screen will be reflected to you so in this what comparisons you want to do you need to put the parameters first you need to put the controlling area then you need to put the fiscal year 1 and 2 for comparison purpose with which you want to compare with which fiscal year so suppose I want to compare the fiscal year of four 15 with suppose 14 because I cannot take 2013 as 2013 the controlling area was not there so we'll be taking 15 and 14 for comparison purpose and now we can execute this report executed So now we can have a look on the transaction over here that the cost element 400001 that is cash discount allowed has an actual transaction of $10,000 in 2014 and the difference is this much that means it is an actual report. So you can see on the header actual yearly comparison so you can compare the actual expenses or values been spent on the basis of the internal order from one year to the another year that can be done over here so there you can see this is the group value if you want to break down the group to internal order level we can go to a respective internal order that is 1002 so we can click on to this internal order and it will be break up into the internal order level so you can see over here within this internal order, order the internal order number has been assigned over here but if you go at the group level in that case it will go off so you can see over here there is a star now for the group so for the group a group can have multiple internal orders that is why the group will not be reflecting any internal order number but if you go for an individual internal order level in that case the report will show you the internal order number over here so similarly you can execute the report for actual com actual yearly comparison on year to year uh, internal order to internal order comparison from one fiscal year to another year or you can even compare the report from order group to order group on the fiscal year basis. So for that you need to create couple more data in that you need to create uh, many more internal orders and you need to go for the planning of that and have to post certain transactions with fb50 or fb60 transaction or fb70 and once you do those transactions that will give you a an actual data in the system and on the other side you will get the plan data and it will give you a more better understanding for how that actual and the plan varies So this is about the yearly comparison. Now moving back to the next report that is actual line item report. The actual line item report shows you the actual uh, transaction by which the internal order value has been generated. So the report is KOB1. So we can move to this KOB1 enter. 
so when executing this report you can put the posting date from when to when you want to see the number of different transactions in the internal order and then you have to select the internal select the internal order or group for whichever you want to have a go for the line item details so suppose i i take it as 1002 or 3 so we can go for that and execute it so in 3 you can see it's blank that means in 1003 internal order there is no transactions for actual internal order value but if you go for 1002 let's see so you can see there is a particular transaction of ten thousand dollars in this case and even you can see the detail of the transaction this is the document number by which this particular value has been posted and this is the cost element this is the cost element name and this is the vendor name so this document number if you want you can even have a look to that double click on that and it will be taking you to the document number so this is the document which we had posted if you remember a couple of training session back while doing the internal order part so you can see over here I have assigned the internal order and from here the internal order has been reflecting as an actual value in the report to you as a line item as well as on the other reports as well so this is how you will be you can see the line item details of the internal orders you can have those reports on the basis of uh, internal order or on the basis of internal order groups or even on the basis of cost element or cost element group and the, the date option is also there so you can go for one particular day and you can search for one particular week or a month as well so moving back this is the line item display of internal order now moving to the last report that is for list of internal orders so as of now in the SAP system whatever the different number of internal orders created it will give you that particular list with their values in the SAP system so the transaction is OK05 let's see how this report looks like KOK5 enter so if you go for this it asks you first to select the variant catalog so in that we can select a variant catalog as suppose I take it as IDES this one double click on this now we can go for executing it okay there is no order okay we can take a standard variant and now we can execute it enter so you can see the list of the different internal orders have been given to you so what you need to do to execute this particular transaction is once you took the transaction on the transaction column filled enter on the screen now it will ask you for the variant selection variant so the selection variant should always be taken as a standard variant from SAP side so the standard variant in this particular case is SAP 01 you can see that it's written as standard so this is the standard variant which you are supposed to take so double click on it and it has been taken up over here once this has been taken now I can go to execute so once I execute it gives no selection criteria specified no problem you can click on to the enter on the keyboard and it will proceed so enter now you can see the list of internal orders have been assigned has been reflected to you so these are the different internal orders which are existing as of now in the SAP system for the controlling area Z100 so these are the internal order this is the internal order type and then you can find these are the internal categories this is the reference order it has been created by the user ID has been assigned to you then the created on the date on which this internal order was created when the internal order was changed later on what was the date changed by whom it has been changed been assigned and then the description of internal order company code controlling area so it's it, it shows you the master data details related to the internal order over here on the screen so these are the different details related to master data which has been reflected to you 
uh, in the in this particular part so this is basically an internal order master details related to the internal order so these are the different reports which are helpful in internal order part and this is basically more of the reports and transactions related to internal order planning and we are done with the internal order planning part in the next training session we'll be looking after the internal order settlement how uh, as discussed in the very first training session that is the last training session part of internal order that the internal order basically is taken up as a short term where all the costs are taken up for till that particular project or job is in progress and once that has been done that whole cost is transferred to any cost center or an object or an GL account or maybe an asset account so we'll see uh, that is done with the help of a settlement of internal order so how that settlement is done again that will be covered in the next training session session so that is basically for internal order settlement training session which will be covering in the next training part so you can go with this internal order planning in this point of time we'll see you in the next training session with a new topic thank you